thanks so much for clicking on the video. My name is Leah and let's talk about the drama that's going down in Potomac. So in this video, I'm going to talk about three things. One, Miss Katie getting into the mix and adding her two cents about this whole Miss Debbie debacle. Then Miss Debbie saying she gonna be vindicated as well as Robin and Juan Dixon allegedly not coming back to Real Housewives of Potomac for season eight. So let's get into right, it. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is Robin and Juan. So I was scrolling on the internet and I saw a few content creators on YouTube talking about it as well as I saw a few people talking about it on um, Twitter about Robin and Juan allegedly supposedly leaving Real Housewives of Potomac. And I was just like, about that so i hit the google like i tell y'all google is free 99 but be smart when you google use critical thinking skills don't be out here posting things that you know that is not on a credible site don't do that to yourself don't embarrass yourself so i typed in robin dixon leaving potomac and only two websites popped up one media takeout and then the other one was all true t or all no all about the team my bad all about the tea, not all true tea, because I fucks with all true tea, but all about the tea popped up. And I was like, if you know, you know. You know what I mean? You know. So I was just like, huh? Okay. So I was looking at other websites like Radar Online, page six, and I didn't see anything. So I was just like, hmm, okay, let me read it. So I'm going to read the article for Media Takeout. The link's going to be below, and then I'm going to give you my thoughts. So it starts off like this it says, Robin and Juan Dixon reportedly leaving Real Housewives of Potomac amidst scandalous lawsuit. And this is dated December the 30th, 2022. It says Juan Dixon is and his fiance, Robin Dixon, are not expected to return for next season of uh, Real Housewives of Potomac Media Takeout has learned. We spoke to a person close to the RHOP production who told us that Robin and her partner Juan are expected to leave the popular Bravo television show after this season ends. And it's not Bravo who wants them to leave either. The friend explained Juan and Robin are in full protection mode. This lawsuit is destroying their reputation and they don't want to be on TV until it gets cleared up. For those of you who haven't been paying attention, Media Takeout reported earlier this week that Juan Dixon from Real Housewives of Potomac has been named in a blockbuster lawsuit that could take him down and also take down the entire basketball program at the Copen. I think it's called Coppin, Coppin State University, the HBCU where he coaches. And then I'll add it to you. And the rest of the article is just talking about what is being alleged in the lawsuit. So here's my thing, you guys. I don't know how much I believe this. And like I said, it's from two websites that I normally never go on. Okay. <laughs> So it's just like, eh, I don't know. But I could see it being plausible. And the reason why I say that is because when the block get hot, the block get hot. And not everybody can handle the heat. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. I also think about it in the way of like every university college has scandal around the world. And it's like, it's kind of like, it, it, in the sense, it comes with the territory. Not saying that what happened should have happened. It should have never happened to that young man. And I totally hope that he wins and gets justice and is able to find a good therapist and recover and, and live a prosperous life amidst all of this crap that's going on right now. Um, but in my mind, I'm just kind of like, every college has scandals. Even the smallest, like even community colleges have, and they scandals be a lot. They be messy now. They be more messy than, than the stuff we got going on in universities. So it's just kind of like, I don't know how much that would move Robin and Juan not to be a part of the show. But like I said, I could see them not wanting to come back if the block got too hot. But I don't know if that is a smart move on Robin's part. And Robin don't seem stupid. In my opinion, I think that RHOP or Potomac is a large, large portion of her income. And I was, I, in my mindset, I'm thinking like, you don't want to lose one job for another job because the tides may change in the sense of Juan being like solely in trouble for all of this because Juan isn't the only person getting sued. It's actually the school. Juan is just one of the people that was named in the lawsuit because he was the head coach and allegedly he did not take the necessary actions or steps to protect the student. But I don't think he could be 
like liable in the sense if they do an investigation and find out that he did follow the protocol that was set by the school and that comes with a lawsuit like with them doing an investigation and doing all of this stuff but I don't know if that's enough to make somebody like not want to be on the show um and if he and then the thing is like the other way is like he could lose his job so it's like why would Robin give up this job because a bravo check is a, is a good check it's a good check so i don't know why she would give that up for this you know what i mean what i can really see is her being demoted or asking to be demoted kind of the same way i feel like luann kind of switched up on real housewives of new york where like when she got with what's that man what's his name tom that bald-headed man that she married that everyone told her not to marry because he was a pass around. And we like saw her a lot, like, but then when everything, like the scandal came out of like Bethany telling her, it's kind of like we saw her sparingly. Like she didn't really want to be around the ladies cause she was like embarrassed and was trying to like figure out how to move forward with this. So it's like a lot of women or a lot of, well, I'll say housewives have been able to step back when the block gets too hot for them and then come back and be the same or be demoted. And I feel like Robin would be demoted or asked to be demoted, but I don't think she would want to lose this whole check of this in, like entirely only because I don't know how successful reasonably shady is when it comes to advertisement dollars, as well as I don't know how successful her um, clothing line or her hat company is like, She's growing it and it, and we've hear good things about it, but I don't know if you can solely live off of that. I don't think I don't know if those two businesses are where they can be her sole income versus Potomac. That's just my 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 mind where my mind is seeing it. Um but yeah, if it does happen, like if, if this information is true and she does leave and doesn't come back or she comes back once everything is okay and they have the clear and Juan isn't in trouble or they're not liable in any way, I do wonder how this show will change in a sense. Like how will Giselle move? Will she team up with Ashley? Like and Ashley and Giselle will be the new green eye bandits or the new duo on the show. Or will there be a new person that Giselle clings on to? Or will she, or which, or will her personality switch up in its entirety? You know what I mean? Like, will she try to like be cool with everybody now that she doesn't have somebody that she knows is always going to be by her side? But yeah, y'all, those are just my thoughts. So drop down and comment below and let me know what you think. So let's get to the next. All right, y'all. So <laughs> Miss Katie, Miss Katie Frost, has, Ross. I always call I say Frost, like Kurt Frost, ugh, but Miss Katie Ross. So Katie has some things to say to add in her two cents about the whole situation with Miss Deborah, Miss Debbie, about Chris and Eddie hitting on her. So this is what Katie said. She took to Twitter, and I'm gonna also play the video that she had attached to um, this caption. And this is what she had to say. She said, I don't often talk smack. Yes, I do. But this is from my camera at the real, really fun party last year. And just Katie's take on things. If you are going to hit on a real hottie at a party, it would be this one. Actually, I think I did. Hashtag Katie vibes hottie alert. And then it's a cute video of the brown skin friend. Ashley's brown skin friend dancing like, you know, winding it up at, um, at the spring fling party that they had earlier this year, well, not earlier this year, but earlier in the season of Real Housewives of Potomac, the one that everyone has been saying, if y'all would have told her to be a part of this, then it would have been more believable because she would be more so Chris and Eddie's type. She's pretty, she's petite, she's a brown skinned chick. It would make sense, you know? But y'all ask Miss Debbie, Miss Debbie, and it's like, Miss Debbie, you know? So I just think it's funny that like everybody is saying the same thing, that it's not believable. And as well as like, y'all should have picked her <laughs> to be in this mess. <laughs> I know, I know for a fact that Jules Chick and this one right here, which I told y'all, I think that lady name is Robin, are probably like annoyed by Ashley and everything's going on because everybody is making her crew liars or they're adding them to this story and I know they probably want this season to be over fast and quick <laughs> so let's move on to Miss Debbie and how she says she she vind she gonna vindicate herself 
So let's right, move on. So let's talk about Miss Debbie, Miss Deborah. I don't know why y'all keep calling her Deborah. And I, I was like, I've been trying to Google to understand. And maybe that's just some pop culture reference that like, I just don't know. <laughs> you know what? I just got it. It's the way she spelled her name. Cause it's not Deborah. It is Deborah. <laughs> I just got it. I thought y'all were ref. I thought everybody who was making videos, making comments, were referencing some some pop culture icon or some pop culture moment. And I just was like, oh, I just don't know. But now I'm looking at her in like her name, and it is Deborah. <laughs> I can't. I can't. So <laughs> I'm a. I'm gonna try my best. To be nice. I really am. So Deborah hopped on Instagram to say that she will be vindicated. And I want to know how and why would you do this to yourself, ma'am? So I was on YouTube and I saw that House of Aaron um, did a video about this. And I was just like, what is he talking about? And what is she talking about? So I watched the video and then I went over to Instagram to, to see what was going on. So I, I went to Deborah's page and this is her most recent post. And it says, and the last time I looked at it, it had 189 comments and 66 likes. And it says, I will, I shall be vindicated. Nobody can make that happen but me period. And then if you go to her stories, she has the same, she's saying the same thing. So I'm like, okay, Deborah. Okay, ma'am. So then I hit the comments to see what the people got to say. And there's only one comment. And it's some lady with two clapping hands emojis. And the like, you know, the amen, like, I call them amen. Woo, you know, the glory hands. You know, that's what I call them. And so I was like, but where are the other 180, like, you know, 188 comments? Why do you only have one comment out of 80, out of 189 comments visible? So I said, okay, girl, you just couldn't handle the heat. And I was like, mm. I was like, okay, Deborah. So then I'm like, you know what? I'm on your page. I'm going to be nosy. It's public. Let me, let me look. So I go to the post that's right beside it. And it's a picture of Deborah. She got, it was a slideshow and it's her sitting in a car. She actually looks nice on this picture. And she said, good morning, gorgeous butterflies. Did you um, did you all enjoy last night's episode? The truth is the truth, and I will always deliver it. Hashtag pink is my favorite color. Hashtag R-H-O-P. And this was dated like three days ago, so she posted it like either um, Sunday night or or she posted it Monday because she's saying last night, so it'd be Monday. So I'm like, okay. So I go through the slideshow. She got one boomerang of her flipping all that head on her hair. Then there's a picture of her outfit. I don't know what is up with her in t-shirt dresses. And mind you, there's nothing wrong with a t-shirt dress. But I need you to um, dress it up, Deborah. Dress it up. Like, you just got on a t-shirt dress. What is this? Oh, it's confetti. <laughs> you just got on a t-shirt dress some heels and a purse like girl where's the jewelry where's the earrings where's a blazer where's a where's something Deborah? i need more from you if you gonna say you that girl be that girl because this right here is giving very much like i said it's reception is realness girl what is this all right like honestly Deborah, all you need is some jean pants and that you know what this is giving if she put on jean pants with this top, this would be jean Sunday. It'd be the last Sunday in the month, and it'd be jean Sunday. <laughs> that is what this is giving. Then she has a picture of, um, she took like a screenshot of herself on the show with the Bravo original in it, and then her drinking like a martini glass while they were at Karen's hosting gig. And then you have her doing a screenshot of, um, Ashley, when Ashley put it on her story and it says, look at my baddie and it says Deborah Williams. And then you have the last picture out of the six pictures in the slideshow is Jacqueline, Deborah, some guy in the middle. Um, I think maybe he's like a performer or a DJ or somebody working at the club. And then you have um, Ashley and then Mia. 
And the thing about this one that was funny to me was that it has 1,077 comments. But when you go to click on the comments, there's only like 12 comments that are like approved. Because I guess she approving comments that call her gorgeous. It's, you know, her husband's in there like twice. And I mean, like that's his job. Uplift your girlfriend, not your girlfriend, but your wife. Uh, but And it's like beautiful, gorgeous. But I'm like, sis. You had 1,077 comments and there's only like 12 comments or 12 or 10 comments. So where are the other, other 1,000 and like 60, like 66 or 64 comments, ma'am? Like, where are they? Like, where are they? So then I went to see if she still had the, um, that corny video, that cringy video of her with the puppets. And that one has, um, 359 likes and a hundred, well, and 1,088 comments. But when you click to look at the comments, it's maybe like 20 comments and all of them are calling her a queen and making fun of the whole napkin that she folded at the end and do a read at Candace or make fun of Candace. And I said these 20 comments, but there's 1,066 people that posted. Where is the other 1,000 and like 60 people that posted? And I was just like, Deborah, Deborah, Debbie, 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 Debbie. So here's the thing. You know, I've been seeing some people who feel like everyone needs to chill out on Deborah because like, you know, they feel like it's been too much because everyone's ragging on Deborah. Even celebrities are ragging on Deborah. And I understand that, you know, you, nobody wants to see someone get like piled up on. But my thing with Miss Debbie, and I'm not even going to talk about, well, you know, I'm not because I might reference it. So I'm not even going to tell a lie, but I'm going to not talk about it that much. But I think her attitude towards this situation is what's making it worse. Like, take your L. This is the part, this and that Kevin McCartney stuff that is going on with him not wanting to concede is showing you your ego is always going to get in, like it's always going to be an L, especially in certain situations. And in this situation, Deborah just needs to take this L. Just take the L, bruh. Like she got you. You do look like a Sesame Street character. We all look like certain characters a lot. Shit, I thought I looked like the, you know, the little, um, mcdonald toys the little nuggets like when i was fatter y'all when i tell you these cheeks was up here like especially when i smile i swore i looked like that and that was a read to myself that i used to giggle about all the time so it's like we all look like things but deborah just can't take this l you saying that you always deliver the truth when they showed you that you didn't deliver the truth ma'am like you blatantly lied you blatantly lied. And then you're saying that only you can be vindicated? Well, post the proof. You got screenshots of him talking to you? Did you record your conversation? Was he in your DMs? Did, did you give him your number and y'all are texting? Like, what's going to vindicate you? What What is going to vindicate you? And I think it's nothing. I just think you can't take this L. And you don't want to take this L, but it's like, Deborah, take the L and move on. I knew you was a thirsty one when you were only on that episode with Ashley for maybe five seconds. I'll give be nice. Maybe you were on there for like three minutes because the scene was probably like five minutes. And you and Ashley talked. And you had hashtag R-H-O-P. To this day, you still have R-H-O-P in your bio, and now you have at Bravo in your bio. Deborah, it's coming off mad thirsty. So it's like people don't feel bad for you because you're thirsty. You wanted this attention, and now that you're getting it, all of us, like, you're, you're, you're getting, that's the thing. I think people don't understand anytime that you're thirsty, it ne the attention you want to get from people is never positive. <laughs> It never is. It always ends miserably for you. And let's say, let's say that she will vindicate herself and she's telling the truth or whatnot. People are still going to rag on you because the way in which you're going about this, you're coming off as a bitch. Matter of fact, you're not coming off as a bitch. You are being a bitch. You're not telling Candace this because you actually want to be like woman to woman and give her a heads up because you're like, you know, trying to be empathetic to the situation and be sympathetic to the situation. No, you're doing it to be nasty so you can be on this show to make, have your 15 seconds of, or 15 minutes of fame because you're friends with Ashley. 
you're not doing it because you like somewhat care about this person or you want to be kind towards them. You're doing it to be nasty. So it's like, even if it does come out that this is true and that Chris was hitting on you and Eddie was hitting on you, people are still going to crag on you and make jokes about you because at the end of the day, it wasn't coming from a good place. And I wish you would just take this L and move on, ma'am. I really wish you would like, Take R-H-O-P out your bio. Take at Bravo out your bio. Just know if you are invited to the reunion, Ashley is going to throw you underneath the bus because she's only known you for a year and some change. And then she going to back it all the way up because that's how Ashley do. She finds a way to like weasel out of anything. And then Candace and Wendy are either in low key, maybe Mia, because Mia read you, read you even harder than Candace. Harder than Candace, in my opinion. Like, Candace just called you a Sesame Street care. Mia flat out called you ugly. She said, she said, Candace, she said, Candace and Wendy are eight pluses. You are a four, maybe a four and a half. You're cute, but <laughs> you're all right. And you don't have nothing to say to Mia, but you got smoke for Candace. Mia called you straight up ugly, ma'am. Talk to her. Get at her. But that's just what it is. I just feel like if your face is a conundrum where you have to move at different angles to determine whether you're pretty or not, you probably should not have this much energy or be this nasty to other people because it's always going to come back to you. And like I said in my video, when you, she is getting, and I feel, and that that's the part I do slightly feel bad for her for, is if you had a perception of yourself for years, because I don't know how old Deborah is, but Deborah is probably in her mid to like probably late thirties. But if you've had this perception of yourself as being that, that girl, the preference, the it girl, you know, always being the chosen one. And then you get on national television and you have millions or thousands of people telling you like, sis, you were never that. That is hard. That's hard. That's just what it, it's hard. Cause you, that, that is probably a mind, you know what, because now you're trying to like regroup and now you're trying to prove yourself when it's like, if you would have just sat there and been nice and not been along with this plot of trying to paint this picture about someone else's husband, when they could paint that picture about your husband, now that you putting him on it, like you letting people know that's your man, girl, you better hope don't nobody do you dirty and actually have proof of your man out here running these streets of DC or Maryland, wherever y'all at in Potomac. But yeah, y'all, that's it. That is it. That is all. Remember to be bravely authentic and hop down in them comments below. Deuces.